Yeah. So right. I'm glad to introduce uh, Rodrigo Barbosa, currently at the Simon Center for Geometry and Physics. Uh, he's going to talk about string dualities, Higgs bundles, and G2 geometry. Rodrigo, please go ahead. All right. Thanks, Marcos. Uh, thanks uh, to the organizers, too, for inviting me. Uh, it's a pleasure to give a talk at the Brazilian uh, seminar. I uh, wish I were in Brazil right now. Unfortunately, <laughs> the pandemic killed those plans. Um, so I'll start uh, with an apology because the result I'm going to present is not really a result in algebraic geometry. It's a result in differential geometry, uh, more specifically G2 geometry. I'll explain what a G2 manifold is uh, in the course of the talk. Um, but actually, this result is um, inspired by, by a result in algebraic geometry. In a sense, it's an attempt to, to, uh, to uh, prove an analog of this result in algebraic geometry for G2 manifolds. And what I will present is a, is a first step in that direction. Um, so I'll spend the first part of the talk explaining this, uh, this theorem in algebraic geometry. Um, and, but the goal of the, the talk is, is broader, like to, to, to explain how, you know, there's like, uh, so G2 geometry is a very narrow field in differential geometry. Uh, but, you know, there are several ideas coming from string theory that uh, tend to, uh, uh, people, people like due to these uh, physical insights, they believe that G2 manifolds behave a lot like Calabial trifolds. Um, and my goal is sort of to, give one instance of such, um, to explain one instance of such behavior and hopefully, you know, to convince algebraic geometers that there's, you know, this is a field that essentially nothing has been done, been done yet and there's a lot to do and algebraic geometry certainly will play a key role, um, especially in questions about moduli, uh, moduli problems. So, okay, so let me start by, uh, uh, explaining this result in uh, algebraic geometry. So I'll call this um, uh, the Calabial Higgs correspondence. So it's specifically for Calabial trifolds. Um, all right, so, so the data that I need to, to explain uh, this result. So first of all, I'll fix Gamma will be a finite simple group uh, subgroup of sorry a finite a finite subgroup of SL two C. This is a finite subgroup, um, and we know via the Mackey correspondence that to this I can associate uh, a simple complex Lie algebra of A D type. So for example, if your group is Zn, Z mod n, then your the algebra is, is SLNC. Um, so I want to fix also, uh, so, so I'm using the, the index C to indicate that this Lie algebra is complex because at some point when I talk about G2s, I will want to talk about the, uh, uh, the real uh, Lie algebra. So I also want to fix a Cartan subalgebra. Uh, so this is a Cartan subalgebra. So I want to make this a little smaller. And W the value group. Okay, so uh, so this is. Uh, sort of like the algebraic data. I also want to fix uh, sigma will be a smooth uh, complex curve, not necessarily projective, uh, genus bigger or equal than two. And okay, with this data, what I want to do is I construct uh, a holomorphic vector bundle over sigma. And so this is a, this is a gamma invariant holomorphic vector bundle of rank two. Uh, 
rank 2. Um, so gamma, in, yeah, gamma invariant just means that, you know, the, you have a fiberized action of gamma. Gamma is a subgroup of SL2C, uh, so it acts on C2, of course. Um, and uh, you, you, there is a normalization condition, which is that the determinant of B is isomorphic to the canonical of sigma. So, of course, like, you know, uh, when you have a gamma invariant structure in your vector bundle, this, this will uh, uh, reduce the, the structure group of the bundle to the centralizer of the, of the finite group of gamma inside of SO2. So this, you know, this, in general, like your vector bundle, depending on, on the AD type, it will look like, um, it could look like a sum of line bundles or something like that. Um, okay, so this is, this is uh, the basic object. And from that, what you do is you, you construct this, uh, this variety X zero, which is you just take the total space of V and you quotient by the action of gamma. Uh, and that will give you, uh, that will give you a Calabial threefold, uh, not smooth, of course. Uh, essentially, it's going to be Calabial because of this normalization condition here. This is something that needs to be checked, but this is the condition that that uh, allows that to work. And you know, so so geometrically, what this is, this is uh, this x zero is a vibration of AG singularities of type gamma over your curve. Okay, so I'm using this notation uh, for, you know, this is a fiber bundle. Uh, X0 is the total space of a fiber bundle with fiber C2 over gamma. Okay, so, so, okay, so you have this space. And so there are two results that I want to, to, to mention. The first one is a theorem, uh, is a theorem of Zendroy. So the theorem says that, uh, there is a family of AD fibered labial threefolds, uh, such that this X zero is the is the is the you know is the central fiber of this family. So so this uh, uh, this will be a family of uh, quasi projective Gorenstein. Uh, you know, varieties with a trivial uh, canonical bundle. So I'm going to write this family as, you know, uh, let's say chi over a base S. And so I'm going to explain this right now. So here's your X zero. It's like, it's like the central fiber in this family. I have to tell you what S is and what this zero with a bar means. So every, every member of this family will also be uh, an AD fiber uh, Calabial threefold, uh, but so this 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 space S, which parameterizes this family, is the space of sections. So I have I'm having some trouble with my pen here. I don't know why. Uh, it's the space of sections over sigma of a vector bundle that's given by. Uh, so you take the canonical and you and you tensor with the Cartan module W. So there's some work to actually see that this is a vector bundle. Uh, you can construct this as an associated bundle from uh, a natural C star bundle over sigma. And you know there is some you have to use some some algebra here to uh, to to actually see that this uh, actually H C over W is a cone, but then you can identify it to the vector space. And, Anyway, the, the point is that you can see this is a vector bundle over sigma, and so the space that parameterizes the fans are sections of this uh, vector bundle. And you know the the, the central fiber uh, is just over the zero section. Uh, that's what the zero at the bar means. And I will just use this notation uh, to denote the zero section throughout the talk. Um, that's not all that he, that Zendroy proved. He also proved that there is a, a sem uh, another family which is a simultaneous resolution of all the fibers. Uh, and that family, uh, so so a simultaneous resolution of chi, uh, and it's uh, that family. The base is is just essentially the same as this, except that you don't have the quotient by W. 
it's just the sections of k sigma tensor uh, the the carton so um, right so maybe i should mention you mention to you like what's what's the idea well i, I was just saying in words the idea of this result is that uh, when you look at x0 uh, as above, so x0 has this form, uh, you know, and, and essentially like the deformations of x0 are given by maps from the Riemann surface, uh, maps from the Riemann surface to the unfolding space of the, of the singularity. So, and it's known from work of Slodowy and Briscorn and others that uh, the unfolding space, the the, uh, the the universal unfolding of the singularity is given by uh, H, uh, the Cartan over W, which is what, what appears here. So basically you have maps from sigma to this space HC over W, and then to make the fibers calabial, you need to twist by the canonical. That's why the canonical appears here. That's, that's essentially the idea of, of, of Zendroy's result. Well, I want to... to, to so there's a, the important remark here for us is that, so the space S is also known as the moduli uh, of GC camera covers of sigma. Or if, so if you want to, you know, to stay in, in a more, you know, less complicated setup, like just assume that GC is, is SLNC, then these are just like uh, spectral covers. Um, so if you're on type AN, you can just think of these as spectral covers of sigma. And this is known to be the base of the Hitching system. So this is the base of Hitching system over sigma. Okay, so that's the first observation here. G, G is uh, compact real form associated to GC. Um, all right, so, 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 okay, so like just from this result, you could guess that there is some relation between this family of Calabial threefolds and, uh, and the Hitching system. And in fact, uh, that's what the next result says. So the next result is a theorem and it's due to uh, Diakonescu, Konagi, and Pantev. And what it says is that, uh, so there's a, away from a certain discriminant locus, so there's a discriminant locus uh, I'm gonna call delta inside of S, which is not very really important for us, but away from this, there is an isomorphism of integrable systems. integrable systems. So you take the intermediate Jacobian associated to this Calabial family. So the intermediate Jacobian vibration, this fibers over, you know, this S minus uh, delta, and then this is isomorphic to the Hitching system. Uh, well, like the, the you know, in general, like you have to be a little careful if your group is not of A and type, you have to like to take like the, the prim vibration, etc. But like, that's essentially the, the statement. Uh, so it's a nice homework of integrable system. What it, what it means is that like, uh, so first of all, there's, a, there's some work that needs to be done to make sense of these intermediate Jacobians because these are non-compact uh, Calabials. So you, you know, you have to prove that the mixed Hodge structure in the third cohomology is actually pure etc. Like, you know, you have to make sure that, that these are abelian varieties. So, so this is an isomorphism of uh, families of polarized varieties that also identifies two canonical symplectic structures. So on the Hitching side, there's the Hitching symplectic structure on the, on the Higgs bundle moduli space. And on the Jacobian side, you have like this Donaghy Markman uh, cubic, uh, which is like, it's, 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 a uh, you know, it's, a. uh, uh so a general result that applies, you know, applies more generally than this, but essentially there is a cubic tensor on the base that gives you a symplectic structure on the total space, such that these things are, you know, uh, uh, algebraically complete integrable systems. So this is the result. Um, I want to mention that, you know, 
uh, these these three authors they 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 didn't come to, like you know there is there is some you could guess from Zendroy's results that there is some relation between those two things, but to actually be able to know that this is supposed to be an isomorphism of integrable systems is not obvious. Uh, they actually wrote a paper before this with two physicists, uh, Digraph and Hoffman, where they worked out the physical setup that leads to this isomorphism, the A1 case. Uh, and I'm actually gonna not gonna I'm gonna skip talking about this because I think it's you know, not relevant for the main point. But uh, what I want to stress is that like it's you know in, in these situations it's sort of important to understand the correct physical setup to guess the correct conjecture, the correct mathematical conjecture. So that's what they did. Um, so the, this physical setup involves like uh, some duality involving uh, the B model on a, on a smoothing of this of this x zero and a B model on the on a resolution of this x zero and then understanding um, how these things are related to each other. Uh, I can I can talk more about this if people are interested later on, but I'll just move on to 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 the main point. Uh, okay, so this this is the you know this this result is the is what I would like to sort of have uh, for G two manifolds. So basically, you know, uh, the reason is that there are some G two manifolds that are of this form that look like X zero. So instead of you know instead of having sigma a Riemann surface here, you have uh, a three manifold. Uh, so so you do have these kind of spaces, and the question is, can we uh, do something analog analogous to Zendroy's theorem, uh, so a deformation family for such G2s. Uh, and is that related to some sort of gauge theory? Because, you know, in this case here, the, the, the gauge theory is, is exactly like Hitchings equations, right? That's what this is saying here, that, you know, this family is parameterized by the modular space of solutions of this gauge theory. So, yeah, so, so yeah, so what I want to do is, an, is to discuss an analog of Zendroy's theorem for G2 spaces. So, First, let me tell you about G2 geometry. Uh, this will be very brief, of course. Um, so G2 geometry. Um, so first of all, what is G2? G2 is the compact real form of the Lie algebra, you know, one of the, one of the Lie algebras that appear, so the, the Lie algebra G2 that appears in the classification of simple complex Lie algebra. So it's the Lie algebra that has this thinking diagram here. Uh, so more importantly for us, G2 is a subgroup of SO7. So that's why uh, the remaining manifolds that we're gonna have uh, associated to this will, will, will be seven manifolds. So so in this, in this differential geometric context, uh, what you do is if you take a seven manifold and a three form, so phi is a three form, Assume M is orientable. Uh, then from this, you can construct something that I'm going to call G phi. Uh, so it's, it's going to be a sym symmetric bilinear uh, pairing. So it takes two vectors in, in M. And what it does is it contracts the first one with phi. So phi is a three form, so that gives a two form. You contract the second one with phi, that gives another two form, and then you wedge all of that with phi. So you got two form, two form, three form, that's a seven form. Uh, so this, this is symmetric and bilinear. So this will be the model for, for, for what the G2 metric should look like. Uh, and then, so if you assume G phi is a, so you, you, your manifold is oriented, so Assume this is a positive multiple of the volume form. And assume that uh, G2, uh, G2 uh, fixes phi. So G2 is a subgroup of SO7, so it acts on three forms. Uh, so you can, you can look at uh, those three forms that are fixed by G2. So if those conditions are met, you say that phi is a G2 structure on M7. So, um, um, 
Okay, so that's what it is. And actually, like G2 structures are plentiful. Uh, there's a simple uh, calculation that you can do. Like if you look at the dimension of GL7, that's 49. If you look at the dimension of G2, uh, I didn't mention what this is 14. And this is, you know, if you do this calculation here, this is uh, 35, which is the dimension of lambda 3 t star of m. Uh, so what this is telling you is that there's an open orbit. There's an open GL7 orbit. If you, if you have one, there's a canonical one in R7, for example, uh, then there's an orbit of them. There's an open orbit of G2 structures. So, but in, in geometry, what's really interesting is, is G2 structures that satisfy some integrability condition. Uh, like always, you know, like in any other flavor of geometry, uh, symplectic geometry, Taylor geometry, et cetera. Um, so there is this uh, Berger's classification of holonomies of Riemannian manifolds. So what this says is that G2, G2 can be, can occur as, G2 can occur as, as holonomy of a seven manifold. I'm not gonna write, of course, the full classification, but uh, we know that G2 can appear of a Riemannian metric. And the condition, the condition on phi for this to happen. So, uh, so the metric G phi, uh, which local is going to look like the one I wrote. So G phi is uh, is a G two holonomy. So. So technically speaking, by G2 holonomy, it means that the holonomy is contained inside of G2. It doesn't have to be the full G2. So this, if and only if uh, this tree form is parallel with respect to the to the Levitivita connection of this metric, if and only if, and this is the, the these are the conditions that are usually studied, uh, the two equations are satisfied. Phi is closed, and phi is co-closed. And here I should mention that the Hodge star appearing here actually depends on phi because it depends on G, which depends on phi. So this second equation is highly nonlinear. Um, so if, if your G2 structure satisfies just the first equation, you say it's a closed G2 structure, it satisfies just the second, you say it's co-closed. Uh, what I'm gonna talk about is closed G2 structures. Uh, usually the second equation uh, has uh, to solve that involves like heavy analysis. So that's not gonna be our goal here. Uh, other Other, other uh, things that we know about G2 manifolds are that uh, they are always Ricci flat. Uh, we know uh, M is automatically spin. And moreover, it has exactly, has exactly one parallel spinner. one independent parallel spinner. So by this, I mean just, you know, a section of the spinner bundle that is parallel with respect to the spin connection induced by the Levi-Civita connection. Um, so this, this, this is a very important uh, property, uh, having one parallel spinner, like Calabi Alves have two uh, independent ones, and so so this is uh, this is sort of like the point of connection with physics. Like uh, this this tells us that uh, you know when when we do like string compactifications on on these manifolds, they will give rise to n equals one supersymmetry. Whereas in Calabi our manifolds, we get n equals two supersymmetry. So uh, so this sort of constrains what kind of physical setup we can build up for this. Um, so some of the simplest examples. Rodrigo, I'm afraid something happened with your microphone and we can't hear you. You can't hear me? 
Now we can. You can? Yes, go ahead. Is, is it all good now? Hello? Yes, yes, yes. Everything's okay now. Go ahead. All right. Okay. Um, all right. So the simplest examples are you can take a Calabi out threefold and cross with an S1. That will be all, that will be G2. And you can take, more important for us, you can take uh, the three tors with its flat metric and cross that with a K3, and that will be G2. And if you fix uh, flat coordinates on the three tors Xi and you fix uh, a hyperkähler structure on the K3 omega i, then you can actually write this G2, this three form. Uh, in terms of those, it's going to be the sum of dxi wedge omega i plus the volume form on the base. So I'm going to write this dx1, 2, 3. So it's just, just you know, dx1 wedge dx2 dx3. Of course, this sum goes from 1 to 3. Um, so so these, are, these are like um, simpler examples. Um, OK, so I should, I should mention like a, uh, like very briefly, like a, a, a dictionary between Calabi L3 folds and G2. Uh, that comes from like uh, the, the calibrated geometries that exist in these two setups. So in a Calabi L3 fold, you can have the Kähler form omega, and then the the, the submanifolds that are that are calibrated by that uh, are the holomorphic curves. Holomorphic curves. Uh, by, by calibrated, just mean that like omega restricts the volume form of this. And in the an analog in the G2 manifold is the tree form, phi, and then the things that are calibrated by it are called associative submanifolds. Associative. And then you also have, uh, you know, the real part of the holomorphic volume form in the Calabi L3 fold, and that calibrates special Lagrangians. And here you have star phi, which calibrates, so it's a four form, it calibrates certain four dimensions of manifolds called co-associatives. So instead of having two dimensional and three dimensional, you have three dimensional and four dimensional um, objects. Now there are several things that make G2 harder uh, to, to work with. The first thing is of course, they're not complex manifolds. So you don't, you can't use algebraic geometry directly. Uh, there is no Calabi L theorem for G2s, meaning that like you cannot start with something like a Kähler structure, which is easier to build, and then sort of try to reduce that to G2. Um, you know, if you think about it, like uh, the holonomy of Kähler manifolds is UN, Calabi L uh, manifolds is SUN, so it's sort of close, but there is nothing like that for G2. And another source, sor source of problems is that there is no separation between the associative geometry and the co-associative geometry because they come from the same form at the end of the day. Well, like in Calabi Al, you can like study like Kähler deformations and complex deformations separately. So for example, like, uh, uh, you know, mirror symmetry for G2 manifolds, which is conjectured to exist, is, is much harder because of this. Um, but anyway, going back to the, to the question that I raised before. Uh, so the question was, uh, can we study moduli of G2 structures by gauge theory in lower dimensions. Uh, by a gauge theory in lower dimensions. So, so I've been emphasizing like the, that there is, uh, uh, you know, that it's important to understand what's the physical process that leads to this uh, statements because it's, you know, so if you try to naively uh, do something entirely analogous to what Diakonescu, Donag, and Pantev did for, for the Calabial case, it's not going to work because the physical setup doesn't apply to G2. So you have to find a different physical setup. And um, so that's, uh, I'm going to explain this briefly because basically there is no way to avoid that. Uh, I, like to, to tell you exactly what are the equations that will replace the heat chain equations for a surface in the case uh, in this case of the G2 setup, you sort of have to go through it. Uh, but I will, I will try to, to do this in the most mathematical way, I guess. So basically the physical setup 
is what's called uh, M theory type 2a duality. And, you know, for us today, it doesn't matter what these terms really mean uh, as much as like what in, in a particular setup, what do they mean mathematically? That's, that's all I'm going to uh, try to focus. So, uh, so basically like, um, it's based on a, there is a, a paper by a physicist called Sen, which says that, you know, this M theory, if you put it on a space, so this is always, you always have to put this on an 11 dimensional space. So if you put it on an AD singularity of a n type uh, times R7, then this is basically equivalent to this two way thing on R3 times R7. But then there's an extra data. There's some objects called D brains, uh, specifically D6 brains, and you, you need to have n of these objects uh, on the R7. So these objects, uh, the six means that it has six space dimensions. So, it, you know, in space time, it has seven dimensions. So it has to be located on a seven dimensional subspace, in this case, in R7. Um, okay, so, so, okay so, so this is just a black box for us. Uh, what we want to do is we want to to use that uh, that description in a setup where uh, suppose we have a G two space that I'm going to call M zero of the form that I of you know of the form similar to the Calabial uh, situation. So you have an AG singularity. Uh, I should mention that I'm doing the A N case only because uh, Actually, this 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 correspondence by Sen only applies in the A and D cases, and the D case is more complicated. So, so I'm entirely focused on the A and case here. Uh, so, suppose it looks like this. So, it fibers over a three manifold Q. Okay. Um, so, suppose we have that, and you know we want to understand this this you know the the G two geometry of that by by looking at this other side here. You know, we assume that this 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 thing makes sense mathematically, and we want to look at the other side. So, before I tell you what what appears on the other side when you have a G two like that, I should mention that one is that there are examples of G two that look like this. So we're not looking at the empty set. And secondly, uh, an important thing is that uh, about M theory is that M theory on a G two is purely geometric. Uh, so what I mean by that is that. Uh, the moduli of this theory is basically given by G2 structures. Uh, it's not really G2 structures, it's given by complexified G2 structures. So you, you have to introduce uh, an imaginary uh, tree form to, to describe this. So it also depends on this extra data, uh, which is called a C field. So, you know, you have- Can a, I ask, can I ask a question? Yes. Hi, Rodrigo. This is Enrique. Um, so, in, in this in this setup, um, the total space the 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 it's a, it's an actual smooth G two manifold, right? It may it may have these it may have singular fibers, but the total space is smooth along a G two manifold. Uh, no, this is an orbital. Uh, so it has it has an orbital singularity along the zero section. So it's similar to uh -huh. the x zero for the Calabria in the previous case. So it's not okay. So, so it's it's some. So in which sense does it have G two holonomy? Uh, so I'm 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 only gonna talk about um, closed G two structures. You know, I'm not going going to talk about metrics. But the point of this is that you want to put this in a family, you know, such that like uh, you know the the it's the central fiber, it's the singular fiber in a family where the the other the other fibers are smooth. You know, so in a way That's you're fine. like so you're dealing. So M zero is a is an orbifold is is a real seven dimensional orbifold with uh, with uh, which away from the singularity has a G two a closed G two structure but with yes. torsion. Um. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. All right. So. Um. Okay. So so. So, so the, the, the good news about this is that, you know, uh, if, this, if this duality is true, then we can understand this moduli space, which is basically the moduli space we're interested in, except that it's complexified, by looking at the moduli space on this two-way side. And that will be, that will be uh, something related to Calabial trifold. So 
basically a slight a slight uh, modification of this SAN uh, correspondence here, uh, in which instead of C2 over Zn times R7, I have uh, this M0 times R4. So basically I replace three of, you know, R7 is R3 times R4. I replace R3 by a, by a three manifold and I allow the, the AD similarities to fiber non-trivially over that Q. So if you, if you go back into this and you look carefully, what it says, it's gonna tell you that, you know, at least in some limit, uh, this two-way dual of this M0 is basically the cotangent bundle of Q times R4. So, so I mean, I, I have to be more precise. M theory on M0 times R4. And the dual of the two-way dual of that will be T star Q uh, times R4 um, with N D6 brains located at the same place they were before on Q times R4. I will explain to you now what this D6 brain mean mathematically. Um, so basically, uh, you know, there there is what what they mean depends on which space you are looking at and which flavor of string theory you are, you are working with. But in this particular setup, what it means is that uh, if your D6 brains were allowed to sit, uh, if your ND6 brains were allowed to sit anywhere on T star Q times R4, what that would give you would be an SUN uh, Hermitian Young Mills connection on a vector bundle over T star Q, on a, you know, an N dimensional uh, real vector bundle on T star Q. But the fact that you are asking actually them to sit specifically on Q times R4 uh, mathematically is translated as a dimensional reduction down to Q of this data. And if you perform the dimensional reduction of the Hermitian music equations on T star of Q down to Q, what you're gonna get is the following equations, uh, which I'm gonna write them down here. So here, so I'm gonna put an asterisk here because uh, I'm gonna refer to this later. So here A is a SUN connection you know, on E restricted to Q over Q. And theta is what I'm gonna call a Higgs field, is a one form on Q with values in the adjoint bundle of E, Higgs field. And it's actually not unnatural to call this a Higgs field because, um, uh, because, so if you just look at these equations here uh, on a Riemann surface, uh, actually they are equivalent to, to, to Hitchens equations. So basically the Hitchens equations, the way you would normally write it as like, you know, some, some uh, holomorphic uh, uh, endomorphism valued one form uh, you can just take the real part of that one form and rewrite the equations, and then you're going to get exactly these equations. And actually, this is something that uh, in the same in the same journal where Hitching uh, uh, published his uh, his paper about Higgs bundles, uh, there's a paper by Donaldson where he essentially writes down this that this this is just another formulation of the equations. Um, Sorry, what do we know about the vector bundle E? E is a is a rank n real vector bundle of the T star of Q, and then I you you know you you just consider its reduction down to Q, and it has a SUN connection and it has uh, this Higgs field. So, Are you assuming that E? Th therefore, you're assuming that E is trivial along the fibers. The E is trivial along T star, T -star of Q. Q. Yes, yes, yes. So what, right. what kind yeah, of reason, bundle does that? I mean. Do, 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 I mean, you just, you, uh, this is part of the assumption data, right? You're assuming there's a bundle E that satisfies it. You, you mean the E in, on top of T star of Q? Yeah. Yes, that's right. So, so right. So T star of Q is, is, is just R3 times Q, right? Sure. Yeah. 
And you're assuming that so, uh, so, so we get a bundle and a connection, which is a Mishnah Mills, and that bundle is trivial along the, the R3 component uh, uh, in a two-star queue. Yes. Yeah. Right, okay. I think that's right. So it's yeah. the pullback of a bundle on queue. Um, yeah. Fine. Sure. Yeah, Rodrigo, I, think I, I think that's right, yeah. yeah. Rodrigo, what is queue again? Queue is a three-manifold. For now, I, I haven't put any restrictions on it. Just any three manifold, okay. Yeah, actually like the, the thing, okay, so I'm gonna announce, say what the theorem is in a minute. Uh, uh, yeah, actually I'll just go to that now. So, 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 so basically the question is how much G2 geometry do these equations here know about? Um, and the, the answer is that we don't know yet, uh, but uh, I, I have a partial answer to this. And so what, what I proved was, so let me just write this here. Let me just move to the next page. Um, sorry, I have some trouble here. So theorem. Uh, so if you take your Q to be, uh, so first of all, it needs to be oriented, but also if you take it to be a flat three manifold. So this is a big restriction. Um, but uh, I actually know already how to, to generalize this. Uh, I mean, you, you need a condition. It's, this is not going to work for any three manifold. Uh, you can take some trivial case, like if you take a three sphere and cross it with like some, uh, with some uh, you know, space of SU2 holonomy, you're not going to get uh, a G2 space. But so there, there must be restrictions. Uh, but uh, I'm basically certain that I know what's the most general condition you can have here. It involves some, some the existence of some parallel tensor on Q3. Uh, so that would be more general than, than this flat condition. But anyway, suppose that Q is flat. That, that's what we know for now. Uh, and assume that we have a vibration by AD, by AD singularities of type AN. So you have, you have M0 is a seven manifold, a vibration by AD singularities. And suppose you have a three form phi zero, which is closed, uh, a closed G2 structure. On M zero. Uh, and you also need to assume that the fibers are co-associative to make this work. So basically, uh, co-associative is the analog of special Lagrangian that I mentioned before. And I mean, in the examples that I know of this, this is true. So co-associative, like I said, it means that uh, star of phi restricts to the volume form on the fiber. Uh, so, so the result is that, uh, the claim is that there is a deformation family of closed G2 structures. Of, of seven manifolds with closed G2 structures. So I'm gonna write this as, let's say, I'm gonna call this F and the base I'm gonna call it B. Uh, so here you have the central fibers, this M0 with this uh, phi zero, and then it lies over this zero, which again is gonna be some zero section because this B is the space of flat sections over Q of T star of Q tensor with now the real carton over the bio group. So basically you replace, you know, holomorphic sections by flat sections, you replace the, the canonical bundle of the, of the curve in the, in the Calabell setup by the, by the cotangent bundle of the three manifold. And you have to work with the real uh, Cartan. So you can, you can think of this, this as the moduli. Sorry, flat can, I just, can I just make sure I understand your hypothesis? Um, surely you mean the fibers are co-associative in some weak sense, right? Because if phi is just closed, then, then star phi is not a calibration. Yeah, uh, that's right. Uh, 
So what do you mean by co-associative, yeah. weakly co-associative in this case? Um, I just mean that phi zero restricts, phi, phi restricts to zero on the fibers. You don't mean that star phi coincides with the volume form? Um, Is that no, yeah, I don't, yeah. Yeah, I definitely not assume um, that. So may, maybe using co-associative here is a, is a bit of a stretch, right? Uh, but I, I so, guess you so, okay, I can tell I can tell you why I need to, to, to put this uh, uh, co-associative condition is because uh, you know the, the proof of this uh, requires uh, so, so so to prove this uh, I need to use uh, Donaldson's theory of Kovalev Lashes vibrations, which which are assumed to be co-associative vibrations. Sure, except that this these guys are not. But that, that that was in the context where phi is an actual, uh, 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 you know, it's a holomy G2. Yeah, yeah, because, so phi, because phi is I both can't, closed and co-closed. I can't, I, can't right? I can't prove anything about the, the star of phi as of now because, you know, that, that, that is where, uh, you know, that would be a different kind of, of beast. This is more about telling first about, you know, if I can deform just closed G2 structures. Fine. So co-associative just today means that phi restricts trivially to the phi. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Just today. I I, th I think I think they're equivalent. They're just they're just uh, the point point wise. The point the point wise conditions are equivalent. I think the the difference in this case is that the the fibers are not minimal. Well, they are not minimal, and star phi is not a calibration. So the difference is basically everything. But fine, sure. Uh, uh, it's fine. All right. Everything's, so everything's fine. Okay. So all right. So this this is this is what it is. So you know. So uh, yeah. So 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 it, it is like basically uh, uh, an analogous uh, uh, result from to to Zendroy's uh, result for Calabi-Aus. Um, uh, well, I mentioned already about the flatness condition on the three manifold. Um, so I can tell you a bit about the idea of the proof for this. So, so there are two things. One is constructing the family, and that's not the hard part. Uh, that's actually what you do is is basically similar to what to what Zendroid does with some modifications. Uh, in this case here, uh, you see that the the base of this of this vibration uh, it's uh, you know it's diff it's now you, you have like essentially like three copies of the carton. So you, you need, instead of using the unfolding of the singularity, uh, uh, so, so basically what you're doing is like you're replacing the fiber by, by the unfolding space of that fiber and you're choosing a section of your three manifold that picks one deformation at every, at, you know, at every fiber. So, but here you really want to do uh, the full hyperkähler, uh, ALE hyperkähler family of Kronheimer's, which is a slight, it, it's slightly different from that, but it's, it's almost the same thing. So basically, you're looking at this as deformations of uh, of the fibers as hyperkähler uh, ALE spaces. Um, so that's 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 how you construct the family. Uh, the the hard part is actually to see, say that there are closed due to structures on the other fibers, uh, and that's where this. Uh, so so let me just mention here. So closed due to structures on fibers. So here's where, where you need to use the Donaldson's theory of, of uh, covalent lash vibrations. So basically what this says is that, so I'm gonna call this KL vibrations. So basically what this says is that, uh, for, for, for our purposes, what it says is that uh, the condition that d phi is equal to zero is equivalent to a bunch of other data. So this bunch of other data is the following. It's, it's, so first of all, you need the existence of three things. Uh, so one thing is uh, a connection on, so like an Erisman connection on, you know, M fibering over Q. Uh, so you need a connection. Uh, you need uh, basically a volume, fo volume form on the base. So I'm gonna write this as mu. Uh, so, so, okay, let's call this pi. So this piece pi star of omega three of Q. 
And you need uh, something that I'm going to call eta, and this is a form of type 1, 2 on M. So 1, 2 just means the following. Because you have a connection, you can, you can describe forms as either uh, vertical or horizontal. So 1, 2 just means that this form has one component along the base and two components along the fiber. So it's sort of similar to that sum of dxi wedge omega i that I mentioned at the beginning uh, as the local model. So, so you need, so basically what, what, what Donaldson's theory tells us is that, uh, so first of all, you need these three things and they, they satisfy a bunch of equations. So the equations just say that, so you can, now you can, you can take your differential and, and so you have a component of your differential along the base and, and one along the fiber. So I'm gonna call the one along the fiber DF. So it tells the DF of eta is equal to D. So I'm gonna use H for the horizontal one. Uh, given by the connection, this is equal to uh, also dh of mu equal to zero. And then there is one non-trivial equation, which is that d along the fibers of the volume form is equal to, there is a curvature operator associated to this connection. And it, it's equal to that curvature operator applied to the one, two form. So basically instead of solving the closed condition, you can solve this bunch of equations. Uh, and that's actually, it's much easier because, uh, you know, so, so basically what happens is that, uh, so mu only depends on the base. So it's a volume form of the base, essentially. Uh, eta is something that sort of sees the hyperkähler geometry of the fibers. And you, you know how these things are deforming, uh, you know, using the, the, uh, the Kronheimer construction that I mentioned. And then the, uh, one important thing is, so, so basically what you do is you, you construct, you've already constructed the total space of the family, this F that I mentioned, and then you construct global forms on F. On F such that, uh, so global forms eta and mu on F such that eta restricts to, along the zero section, it restricts. So remember that the base is a space of sections. So along the zero section, it restricts to your eta zero that exists associated to this phi zero and mu zero. Uh, mu restricted to the zero section restricts to mu zero. And then uh, all, all that is left to do is, is you have to prove something. You have to prove that if S is a flat section, then there exists a connection such that, uh, then I'm gonna call HS, uh, such that if you take this global eta and restricts to the, to the image of S, you take mu restrict to the, to the image of S and you take HS, then this data will satisfy the equations above. So it gives you a closed G2 structure. So I didn't give a name to these equations. Let's call them these equations here, two stars. So they satisfy uh, these, these equations here. And, and, and that's, that's basically what you, what you can do. Um, so um, there, there's a few remarks to, to make. I don't know how much time I have left, maybe like five minutes. Yes, five minutes. Okay. So, so the first remark is that none of this, in fact, none of this uses the, uh, what I'm gonna call the moment map condition of those Higgs bundle equations. So uh, so in here, none of this uses this equation here. Uh, it's, all, it's all purely dependent on the, on the first two. Uh, you, you can just define those, those spectral covers just with, with those two. Uh, and it seems that, uh, it seems that this, uh, uh, this condition uh, this condition d a phi uh, star theta equal to zero seems to be tied to the co-closed condition uh, and sort of like all, all the analysis is sort of hidden there. Uh, there is, um, you know, in, in Donaldson's theory, there is a description of what what's the, there's some analytic condition uh, to ensure that this uh, equation satisfied in terms of that extra, uh, that equivalent data uh, here. So this is something that's just work in progress. 
there, there is a particular limit of, of these of these covalent lattice vibrations called the adiabatic limit, and it's where things simplify. And it seems that in this limit, it's exactly the case that these two equations are essentially the same thing. Um, but this is I can't I can't claim that this is small yet. So so okay, so that's one thing. And uh, another thing that I guess I should mention is that of course this this was. Everything that I said here was was just some sort of analog of Zendroy's theorem, but the full picture that I that I that I mentioned in the algebraic geometry is about an isomorphism of integrable systems, right? So you really would like to have like the the Diaconescu Donaghi Pantev theorem for for the G two family, and so so the bad news is that this can't happen, at least not easily. Uh, and the reason is that, so if you take the equations, those Higgs bond equations, uh, let me just rewrite them. So if you take them, modulo, so so really the, what you're interested in the modular space of solution to these equations. So you take this, you know, this, these are, uh, these are SUN, uh, SUN uh, gauge transformations. Uh, so there is a result uh, which is usually called Donaldson Corlett uh, correspondence or theorem uh, that says that basically this is the same as if you take if you complexify the connection. So if you if you construct a complex connection by you know thinking of the Higgs field as the, as the imaginary part, and you take the solutions of this uh, modulo uh, complex gauge transformations. Um, so so so. So then these two modular spaces are the same. And this last space here is something that's well known in algebraic geometry. This is the character variety of the three manifold with values in SL and C. And this, play, this space is not symplectic uh, for three manifold. In fact, this space is minus one shifted symplectic. Um, so, so, you know, um, it, it looks like if there is some, some, some correspondence of integrable systems, then this is going to be something like that lives like in the derived realm. Uh, so I, I guess I should mention that I uh, have a joint project with uh, with Pavel Safronov, where we are uh, think we are trying to 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 study these these two spaces from the point of view of uh, of this shifted symplectic geometry. Uh, basically, you can describe these spaces locally as some uh, critical locus of some superpotential, and then you can compare. But yeah, we 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 don't know yet. Uh, uh, like we, we don't have the same clue in terms of integrable systems as the you know Diaconescu and Pant have had from 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 the physics setup in that context because in that context actually like the prediction was an isomorphism of integrable systems. While here we are we are sort of in the dark on that. Uh, but hopefully we'll be able to say something soon. And um, yeah, I think this is all that I had to say. So thank you. Thank you, Rodrigo. <laughs> Any questions, anyone? Yes. Go ahead, Hiti. So, um, Rodrigo, this is this is very interesting on many regards. But let let me just try and be specific. Mm -hmm. um, you you just mentioned so you just began to address my question at the very end when you mentioned the uh, work in progress towards the co-closed setup. Mm -hmm. so do we have what's the analog of uh, of the of of Kovalev Vibration theory in the associative vibration case, where where you're considering the closed condition instead. In, what in do you know about that? In an associative vibration, you said. Or, or well, in a I suppose, well, the, you, the the condition you're discussing is the co-associative vibration when your yes. G two structure is closed. Yes. Well. Uh, Complementary situation would be when the G2 structure is co-closed, right? Mm -hmm. And then, yes. and then probably you, you'd be looking at you'd be wanting to look at associative vibrations where the fiber is free. Yeah. 
No, I, I understand. Yeah, I understand. Actually, that's a very interesting question, but I, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, actually, like, it's, yeah, I should have thought about this, but the fact is that uh, Donaldson's theory only applies to co-associative vibration, so there's some sort of asymmetry in, in that theory uh, where, like, you know, if you try to, to describe the closed condition, then it's, it's like, it's simple, it's sort of topological in a sense. It doesn't, you know, it, it's sort of like somehow all the, the, the metric uh, problems go to the co-closed condition, right? And then when you look at the co-closed condition, it's actually quite nasty and you have to go to these adiabatic limits to be able to say something purely in terms of topology or, you know, smooth geometry. Uh, but yeah, like maybe there is like a, some sort of like dual associative uh, covalent Lefschetz vibration feature. The thing is that, you know, it's called covalent Lefschetz because uh, so the name Lefschetz is because basically uh, locally this thing looks like C3 times R mapping to to C times R, where you know the restriction to C3 times to C3 to C is just a Lefschetz vibration, as in symplectic geometry. So I'm not sure if that. So a lot of a lot of results in this theory uh, use this fact, and I don't know if that would be true for the associative picture that you suggested. You know. Uh, no, you you are right. In fact, it's called Lefschetz for the reason you mentioned. It's called Kovalev because this from the original intuition is these K three vibrations that occur in Kovalev's construction of a manifold of those building blocks for for holonomy G two. Right, right, uh, right. So yeah, of course you're right. Uh, the the last point I'd like to to bring attention to is that there there, there are these interesting seven manifolds which alternate between Calabi R geometry and, and seven-dimensional G2 geometry in a non-trivial way, these so-called Calabi R links, mm -hmm. right? So the, the Milner links of hypersurface singularities, uh, which occur in seven dimensions, just by Milner's construction, when you look, look, at, look at the link of a singularity, of an isolated singularity. And these fellows have a co-closed G2 structure, so it's not particularly good for, for your discussion, but Certainly, the D star theta condition would, would make sense to, 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 to study there. And mm -hmm. what these guys exhibit is, an, is, an, is a, they're sort of seven dimensional thickenings of, of Calabial threefolds, if you want. So, a lot of the features of Calabial's reemerge there in a seven dimensional context. It would I be see. very interesting, it would be very interesting if you were to study these, the DDP uh, uh, description on those, on those families. It would, yeah. be, it would be very, very interesting. Well, at yeah, least no, I would be very interested. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, this, uh, thanks for, for pointing out that. It's, it's an interesting, definitely interesting to look at. There is one problem with this whole uh, picture that like, you know, uh, the derivation of these three dimensional equations, these Higgs bundle equations, they really depend on your, on the structure of, of the AD singularity, you know? So in a sense, this is really a local picture. This is never going to describe a, like a, a compact G2. This at most can be no, like no, a local geometry. That, that's absolutely fine. That's absolutely fine. But, but my point is that this comes from intuition uh, that was built on Calabial threefolds, right? You're looking at ADE fiber over some P1 or something. Right, 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 right. Yes. Right. So what I'm telling you is that on the Calabial links, you can reproduce this exact same phenomenon. ADE okay. fiber over P1, but it's a circle bundle over that. So yeah, it's still good. I see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for for letting me know this. I, I, please, I, please have a look. That's uh, that's come out in in two, two, my two most recent papers. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm happy to discuss this with you. I think, yeah, yeah. I think you can do a, can do a lot of damage in that front uh, with with the kind of stuff you're doing. This is very interesting. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Enrique. Thank yeah. you, Enrique. More questions and comments for Rodrigo. Uh, Okay, so um, maybe we thank Rodrigo one more time before uh, finishing. Thanks, Rodrigo. Thank you.